Hello again everyone and welcome back to The Underground. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make a PVS-14 from a PVS-14 parts kit. So let's get started. So why would someone want to build their own PVS-14 or, or other night vision device rather than just buy one outright? The first reason is price. Uh, really, you can build your own PVS-14 for vastly cheaper uh, in a lot of cases than if you were to go to a company and buy one already pre-built. Now obviously when a company builds these you're going to get certifications and and all kinds of professional uh, installation and stuff and such but as I'm getting ready to show you today these these things are not hard to build uh, or technically assemble. We're not actually building anything we're just assembling these right so uh, from a parts kit and you get yourself a parts kit and you get yourself a tube put, the, put them together throw a battery in it and you're golden and that kind of rolls into the second reason which is availability uh, right now in the night vision world, uh, everybody's buying it up. Uh, the U.S. government has a few massive contracts out there, and really uh, a lot of uh, traditional night vision retailers are having a hard time keeping these in stock. Uh, and if you do find one for some miraculous reason, uh, it's probably going to be have a substandard tube in it, uh, one that uh, did not meet the military specifications or just didn't meet the, the, the contract. So... Uh, really, you're going to be paying a lot of money for something that's not super great. Whereas, if you were to build your own PVS-14 from a parts kit like this one, uh, you can shop around for a tube and buy a tube uh, a lot easier sometimes than buying a fully assembled unit. And finally, another major reason that people might want to build their own PVS-14 is privacy. Um, granted, you're going to have to deal with this whenever you go to buy your tube, but for the most part, a lot of people are aware of a lot of night vision companies out there requesting or making you give over a lot of private information just to buy one of these. And we've talked about that a lot. I know I've talked about that a lot uh, over the years in our other content, but honestly, this is something that I just keep coming back to because it, it just bothers me so much. Uh, companies that go above and beyond to follow rules that don't exist. Um, so when a company makes me sign over a stack of paperwork that acknowledging that for you know me acknowledging that I'm going to follow ITAR and then makes me give over scans of my government IDs, which is not required by law or by their contract with either L3 Harris or some other company like that. That's not cool, and um, I don't like that. So I prefer to build my own PVS-14s because there are a lot more companies out there that sell tubes as opposed to the final product. So I'm able to get the, the parts kit that I want, and I'm able to put the tube in it that I want, and I'm able to do that and keep a little bit of my privacy. So I prefer to, to go that route, and as we can see here in just a minute, this is extremely easy to do. So let's jump right into it and let's start building this thing. All right, so let's get to it. So the first thing that we need to do is clear our workspace and don our PPE. We need to want to make sure, absolutely sure, that we don't get any finger oils or any dust inside the device. Or if it if we do get dust in there, we can remove it pretty quickly. Um, it's okay to be overly paranoid with these uh, when it comes to dust. I have found that, for me personally, I don't mind blemishes in a night vision tube. Uh, because it's just something you, you have to expect, but I really don't like dust because that's something that is absolutely preventable. Uh, so what I tend to do is go a little bit overboard and I'll open up a brand new one of these, uh, just a generic uh, lens cloth and use that as a workspace to put my tube. And even now I won't even put it down on, on its glass base because I'm, <laughs> I'm paranoid that the static electricity generated by picking it up will uh, pick up dust. So I tend to like put it on its side there and hope it doesn't roll away. Uh, so this is your night vision tube. This right here is the heart of all night vision devices and what you're paying for. So I'm going to go ahead and put the night vision tube aside for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and kind of wrap it up a little bit just to make sure that any dust doesn't kind of become attracted to it. And we're going to start breaking apart our parts kit. All right, so the first thing we can do to disassemble this bad boy and put the tube in it is to remove the large rear lens. And these threads are really fine, so it takes a lot of uh, screwing to get it undone. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, as, as you get this, it will come with a couple of uh, pins that are not connected to anything. Uh, and those will handle right now. So let's set the large rear objective lens off to the side and let's go ahead and start unscrewing the housing using our 5 64ths hex bit. All 
All right, so once you get your screws undone, the halves of the battery compartment and the rest of the housing will come apart very easily, just like that. So uh, what we can do here is plug in our gain control. So again, like I mentioned, these will usually come loose in a, in a parts kit. Um, if you're getting a, refurb a refurbed uh, device or a parts kit, you might have them attached, who knows, so that's why you need to be gentle. But really, we're just going to line these up just, uh, just the way the battery housing has them here. And we're just gonna simply push them down onto their little leads right there. One, and let's see if we can get the second one in there without causing any trouble. Sometimes this one gives me a little trouble, so let me come at it from this angle. There we go. So now we have our, our leads plugged in very easily. Now you can go ahead and close this all up if you wish, being very careful to make sure that you do not pinch this ribbon cable here. Uh, you can push this all the way back together like so. But what I prefer to do is leave it open so that we could slide our tube in more, more easily. So let's go ahead and grab that. Now what I like to do is make sure that we have all of the dust out of the out of the main housing here. And to do that, I like to take this little uh, photography lens puffer thingy and jetting air up into the cavity like this. I try to make sure that the device is facing down so that I'm blowing air and hopefully the dust will joggle loose and then fall out of the device. That's kind of the goal here um, because I, I don't know if that works any better than just doing it like this, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's some thought to that. Who knows? So, all right, we're going to make sure that we have all the dust out of there and the other half as well. Why not? All right, so taking our tube here, this particular style of tube does not have the little pigtail for gain control because this is an auto-gated tube. So really what we're looking for is this little notch right here and this little line which kind of helps us align it. Well, we're going to slide it right into the housing just like so, very gently until it lines up with that little toggle right there. It's a little easier to show on camera if we leave the side open. Normally I, I don't even insert the tube at this point. I normally close this back and then work from this end uh, because I think it's a little easier and there's a little bit less of a chance of breaking this ribbon cable. Um, so that's what I'll do. And I will close this back up and put a couple of screws in it to hold it. All right, so now that we've gotten the battery compartment screwed back on, we can actually finish uh, finish up here with the tube. Uh, we just got to make sure that we are, in fact, down in that groove. And you can see here the, the threading uh, has a little gap there in it, which aligns with a notch in the actual tube itself. So that's good. We're all good to go. We're down as far as you can go. As you can see, there are several layers of uh, threading so that you, you know that your tube is, is as far down as it can go uh, inside the housing here. Next up, we take our handy dandy light pipe here, which is that little plastic piece that came with your parts kit, and we throw it in there. This is what shows you your battery indication uh, on most devices, as well as your uh, infrared illuminator if you have it. Um, and we wanna make sure that we have this oriented the correct way, so the designers of this $10 piece of plastic uh, put in there handy for us a nice little, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says right here, it says the word up. And obviously, if you can read it, then it's the right way up. If it's if it's <laughs> upside down, you can tell it's upside down. So the upside will be up, and you can actually go over here and see this little notch right here, which aligns with the notch in there. So let's go ahead and drop it in. These little things are a little finicky, so it's handy to have a little screwdriver to kind of coerce it down into the right spot making sure to not touch or scratch anything. And there we go. It's now seated in the notch very, very nicely. And finally, the retaining ring. So uh, this is what holds it all together. Make sure your tube doesn't rattle around and keeps your light pipe everything and everything all straight. Uh, this is one of the ways you can actually damage your device. Uh, if you end up cross-threading this, this is very easy to cross-thread and you do not want that because you ruin the threads inside your housing. So uh, this little uh, ring here, maybe what, 15 bucks to replace, but your housing costs a lot more than that. So again, just drop it in there, being, being very careful. Again, if you have a tool, you can make it a lot easier on yourself, but uh, a lot of times we don't have the tools we need to, to do the job, so we have to improvise and that's okay. So let's go ahead and get this in the right spot and make sure that we're not cross-threading anything using our, our uh, precision screwdriver here to get it as far down as it'll go. You can even back it up. Uh, when I'm Usually if I'm working on something and I'm scared that I'm gonna cross thread something, I will take the, the thing I'm trying to screw in and, and reverse it till I can see it click 
uh, into place up against the threads uh, and that will help get it going. So once we get it started it's a lot easier. We can just continue on around. Uh, now again you can improvise a tool out of this. That's also good to do. You can take a credit card and cut it down to, to be the right size and uh, hopefully I'm showing this on camera well. We can just being very careful making sure that we're tightening it down, not over tightening. And there we go. Uh, this, it's pretty snug in there, so I don't want to tighten it anymore. I don't want to over tighten things. And that's perfectly fine. So now all we have to do is thread on our lens. Threading on our lens, again, making sure to be very careful with these very fine threads. Again, what I'll do sometimes is thread it backwards until I can hear a click. Just like that. Now I know the threads are set and I can slowly move forward without using any force whatsoever. Um, it's gonna be a little tough because there's an O-ring you're trying to get past uh, or or actually engage, but uh, once you get it going, you'll feel that it's going in the right way. And you can tighten it all the way down. Again, this is where a tool might be helpful <laughs> for this. But again, you don't really need that. You can just crank it down pretty good. At this stage, you're not going to break anything. These things are pretty, uh, pretty durable, or at least a lot more durable than people think. And that's usually good enough for government work, right? All right, so once you get your lens screwed back on, you're done. Uh, you could slap a battery in this, and you're good to go. Now, there is one final step that I wanted to talk about briefly because not many people mention it, and uh, it's a little bit controversial. So one of the main benefits to having a pre-built night vision device uh, made by a company that can actually do it uh, and not just this you know, amateur assembly here, uh, is the ability to nitrogen purge. The reason the nitrogen purging is somewhat controversial is because, like anything in this sort of tactical community, there's some, there are diehard supporters and people who say that it's probably not necessary. Now, my own opinion and my own experience is that, yes, nitrogen purging is superior. It would be preferred if you could do it. But again, the, the hardware required... To purge this PVS-14, you, if you were to buy that, you could buy another PVS-14. It's that expensive. So since we don't have expensive vacuum pumps and nitrogen purging adapters and tanks of nitrogen sitting around, we have an alternative solution. So our solution is somewhat in between the uh, options of getting a professional agency to uh, purge your device and not doing anything at all. And that third option is kind of a bootleg option, which involves uh, kind of a pseudo purge and using a uh, wine preserver. Now, a lot of people will just use canned air to do this. And I don't like that because it's not truly an inert gas. Um, it really isn't uh, that great of an option. This is a far better solution. Um, and hopefully in explaining how this works, I can explain why this might work a little bit better. So really what you need to do is get the air out of the device. And that's not really going to be possible unless, because the way to do this, the way the professionals do this, I should say, is by removing this screw right here, which we can do. There we go. Remove that screw. And that's now creates a, a cavity to the inside of the device. And what they'll do is they will suck all of the air out of that, creating a vacuum inside this, and then let the nitrogen gas flow into that. And they'll do that several times, and that will fill the device with nitrogen, cover your uh, cover the hole back up, uh, screw the screw back in, and you're good to go. Your device is now full of nitrogen with uh, no air inside it whatsoever. Well, here's the deal: normal air, what's normal like air that you breathe, is 70% nitrogen anyway. So you're just replacing 70% nitrogen air with 100% nitrogen air, which again makes a difference. Again, professional purging is obviously uh, preferable uh, to not doing anything at all. However, it's not as big of a difference as you might think. So again, our pseudo, our pseudo um, purging method is to take a can of this wine preserver. Now it's very important to get the right kind of wine preserver because this is usually used uh, for people to uh, squirt this gas into their wine bottles to displace the air, again, same way, and, pre and allegedly prevent the wine from going stale or whatever. Well, here's the deal. Uh, this can is actually full of 100% argon gas, at least based on my research. This particular brand is pretty much pure argon. 
So uh, it's not like uh, your canned air that you get for like dusting off keyboards and stuff. Uh, this is actually pure argon gas, which is a noble gas, again, which is uh, essentially in the same vein as nitrogen. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this can, we're going to take the little uh, applicator nozzle here, and we're going to hopefully uh, squirt enough argon into this uh, device to displace the air so that the normal breathing air comes out of the device and the argon goes in. We're going to be careful, extremely careful, to keep the can oriented upright uh, so that we don't get any moisture in there and we don't want to drive any moisture into into the actual body of the night vision device so again I'm not creating a perfect seal otherwise I'm just gonna pressurize the can I am using probably way more than I need to but I want to make absolutely certain because this can is a little pricey for what you're using it for but again it might be worth it because we're gonna make sure that we get as much argon in there as we possibly can there we go all right, that should be enough. Put the can away, get our finger over it. Now, technically, you don't even need to do that because argon is heavier than air. So if you have this oriented this way, you have no problem whatsoever. So I can just drop the screw right in, screw it in. So we screw in the screw, and there we go. We are done. Now our device is fully, well, pseudo-purged, I should say. And uh, we should have at least be a little bit more uh, resistant to things like fogging. But again, not strictly necessary if you live in a tempered environment. I just find that on all of my optics from, uh, you know, weapon sights to binoculars to rangefinders, they all kind of have the same problem where I live. So uh, I tend to do this just because it helps a lot. So there you go, your very own PVS-14 that you can assemble yourself at home with minimal tools uh, and able to take advantage of any parts you might be able to scrounge online. Thanks everybody for watching, and we will see you next time. And as always, fight in the shade.